It is getaway day in Columbia for the series finale. 16th ranked Missouri trying to pull a stunner this weekend by sweeping number three LSU, who's lost four in a row after a 24-0 start. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Columbia. Former Missouri pitcher Matty Gerlock and Noah Reed with you. Missouri's got a chance to do something today it hasn't done in program history, sweep a top five team in the country. 20-2 and two start for Missouri, but there was always this, yeah, but. What will happen when the SEC play starts with a chance to sweep top 25 Auburn today, Brooke? Maybe not so many questions. Two balls and a strike here from Penta, and Crenshaw smokes it. Deep left field, Mizzou takes the lead in the fifth. 0-2 from Burzon. Laced into left field, that has Newland tracking back, bounces off the wall. Phillips is in, Langer scores, Laird gets the wave, three-run double for Alex Honnold, a 6-3 lead for Missouri over LSU. One of four Hoosier runs in this inning, slices that into right field, drops in fair territory. Bassett scores, Copeland's in, Minnick gets held, it's a two-run double, and Indiana has busted this open, 6-0. Got her swinging! Ball game over! Save number six on the season for Taylor Pinnell. Tied for the most in the nation. And Missouri has taken each of the first two from number three LSU. Best friends turn enemies. Okay, not really. They're still good <laughs> friends, but that sounded a lot better. Kenzie Mitchell, Indiana outfielder, Sam Boo, Louisville pitcher. They played at New Pal together, Carol. Won a state championship together in 2018 and 2019. Now in opposing dugouts. And head coach Ed Markham, big smile on his face. He is a big fan of both of these young ladies. Not only when they were in high school, but follows them very closely throughout their collegiate careers. And uh, they share the same field again, even though in opposite dugouts. Really is a bummer that Kinsey Mitchell is not able to play. Suffered a knee injury a little over a week ago when the Hoosiers were down in Gainesville taking on Florida. Otherwise, she would be in the lineup today facing her former high school teammate. She was a part of the everyday lineup for Indiana, hitting over 300 on the season. It's a big loss for them. The Missouri ace Lauren Krings in the circle today, who did necessarily have her best stuff Friday, Maddie, but they still won, and now she's looking for a personal bounce back today. Yes, Krings is definitely going to have to improve in a couple different areas from Friday night. She is going to have to get ahead of these LSU hitters early in the count. She's also going to have to have her changeup be very, very effective today. Through just three and a third innings, gave up nine runs on nine hits, but because of the great offense that she had behind her, resulted in a no decision. Really good through the first 11 games, an ERA of sub two, but the last five games, and a lot of that's been since SEC play started, Maddie, an ERA of almost nine, hasn't quite been the same that she was early in the season. Yeah, Krings has had a great career here as a Missouri Tiger, and I expect us to see a little bit of a bounce back today. Mizzou as a whole, though, they've won the first two, looking for their first sweep ever against a top five team in the country. And we are off and running in Como with a first pitch ball from Krings to the new leadoff hitter, Carly Petty, who batted in the five hole the first two days. I think that's just one of those moves, Maddie, where Beth Torina's trying to just get a spark from her team having lost four games in a row. Yeah, Beth Torina making an adjustment here in this lineup, possibly trying to get a few more runners on base when Allie Newland comes up to bat would be my guess, um, or just trying to generate a little bit of a difference maker here in this LSU lineup. Carly Petty has missed time this season, so she doesn't have the volume of at-bats, but in her opportunities has just been fantastic, hitting 395 on the season. Slices back behind her. Krings already trying to be effective with that backdoor and inside curveball here to Carly Petty early in this count. The most velocity of anybody on this Missouri staff, she throws high 60s, sometimes into the 70s, but it's the off speed that is so good for her. A curveball, a changeup, and a drop ball for Krings. That's a looped out of play from Petty. Stays alive on another two-strike foul ball. The changeup, when it's most effective, is when she's at her best. 
right. Lauren Krings throws that changeup out of the back of the hand, and it spins quite a lot, which is one of the reasons it is so effective. She's able to deceive hitters where it looks more of a faster pitch than it actually is. Popped up into center field. Honnold has a run into left center and makes the snag for the first out. You had asked Larissa Anderson in the mid-game interview Friday after a few innings where Lauren Krings just did not get off to a good start. You asked her why, and she said it all kind of boiled down to that changeup. When she has the changeup working and throwing it for strikes, she's really good. But when she's not throwing that for strikes, hitters can be a little more predictable on what Krings is going to throw. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Noah. Her changeup is kind of the dictator of what kind of day Lauren Krings is going to have, and um, we'll hopefully see that today early in those innings. Good news for Mizzou is Krings is not a rise ball pitcher. This LSU offense hitting 427 against the rise ball this year. That's best in the country. Yeah, Lauren Krings' go-to is definitely to work that curveball on both sides of the plate. Sierra Briggs, who has been the leadoff hitter the past 12 games leading up to today after the Danica Coffee injury about three weeks ago, but back in the two hole today after Carly Petty gets bumped to the leadoff spot. That skips in there from Krings. Two and balls and a strike. And that looks like her first attempt at her changeup today, Noah. And to kind of go along with Larissa Anderson's point, that one was not a very competitive pitch. Right, definitely not something that these LSU hitters are going to chase that low in the zone. Skied into left field, has Phillips chasing back near the warning track, and it bangs off the wall. Briggs rounds two. She's looking for a triple, and she's in there with a one-out triple in the first. And that just really speaks to the speed of Sierra Briggs, able to knock something over the head of Phillips that looks like a double, and she turns that into a triple pretty easily. Second triple of the season for Sierra Briggs. Yeah, she takes advantage of Shantese Phillips out there leaving her feet to go after this ball, and she's able to swipe third base. Beth Torina had told us earlier this week she felt Briggs was still trying to acclimate a little bit to that leadoff spot and hadn't felt totally comfortable there. And so as soon as you drop her back into the original spot, which is the two-hole for her, all of a sudden her first at-bat triples. Yeah, she looks very, very comfortable there. And that pressure is just a little bit different in that leadoff spot. You know, you're the first batter of the game to actually see what Krings is throwing today. Got away from Crenshaw. Briggs takes off, and she's in there. Third straight day that LSU strikes for a run in the first inning. No hesitation there from Briggs to take off from third base. She sees this ball from Krings is nowhere close. Skips off the glove of Julia Crenshaw. And Sierra Briggs just absolutely takes off from third without hesitation, is able to slide in and score. To wrap up that point about Briggs, Coach Torino was telling us earlier this week that when she's in the two hole, the, the job for her is kind of to pass the bat. When you're into the leadoff spot, your role changes dramatically to having to set the tone. And she thinks that maybe she's just more comfortable in that two spot than she is in the leadoff. Right. She's able to utilize all her tools as well in that two spot. She can bunt, she can drag, she can slap, and she can hit away. So it's a little bit of a different scenario there for Sierra Briggs in the one hole versus the two hole. And now for LSU, you've already got a run in the first inning, only one out, and your big bats at the plate now with Allie Newland, who homered yesterday. Bouncer over towards third. That's Kara Daly. Two down. Allie Newland, not a great pitch to swing at on 3-0. Ball was low and away. Cleanup hitter Raylene Gutierrez now, who was phenomenal in night one of the series on Friday. Had three hits, all of them extra bases, including her team leading fifth home run of the year. Check swing, but that's right down the heart of the plate for a strike from Krings, 0-1. Had just one home run total the previous two years, but those power numbers have jumped dramatically for Gutierrez this year. Sharply hit to short. That's the gold glove, Jenna Laird, for the third out. 
Gets Missouri out of the inning, but LSU does strike immediately. A run for the Tigers, and they go to the bottom of the first up 1-0.